welcome back to my channel. Today is the very first garden tour on the big homestead and it's gonna be a little bit fun, a few stories, and um, we've had some trials and tribulations with this garden, but you can see it behind me. It's a little over 100 feet plus my suburban uh, by about 30 feet and we're gonna give you a tour of this big garden today. Now, you might hear four-wheelers and mini bikes wherever they are i don't know where they are we we're having a good old time here today but anyhow welcome to the fuel homestead my name is amy fuel from thefuelhomestead.com i am an author blogger mama gardener everything before we get into the garden i want to tell you this is five acres and um we are planning on building a house that's what all of that piles of dirt is for but probably not going to start on it for a couple months um, once all this COVID stuff is gone. This is the garden. My plan is to have this size garden um, times four. So putting another strip here uh, and two more strips here. But I don't know if that'll happen this year or not. I'm gonna show you what we have now. If you don't know, this house right here is actually my in-laws house. There's another house on the other side of them which belongs to um, the people that live behind us, their parents. So this property is split into two families um, and we all own different amounts of acreage, which is really fun because we know our neighbors and we're all kind of like-minded and it's really fun. All right, so let's get started. Before you go anywhere, hit the subscribe button, give it a thumbs up so people can find it. And remember, this is part of the Homesteaders of America collaboration um, garden tour series. So make sure you go to the HOA page to check out all the other collaborators this week. All right, before we get into the garden, I wanna show you, we have some elderberry plants here on the side, right beside the creek. There are also tons of blackberry plants uh, and just natural forage along here. Um, I'm gonna put like a picnic table or something over there. But we have four of them. So these two I got from cuttings. There's one there and there's one there. And so those are real small. These will probably get some elderberries off of this year. We got these from our favorite local um, Garden Center, Windmill Heights. I will link a video below that we did of this garden center. Um, and these were $18.99. And we will definitely get elderberries off of them this year. There's that one. And then there's this one. And they're both, one is an elderberry Nova and one is an elderberry John. And you probably can't see, but up there um, around the tree line, there's actually another wild elderberry plant growing. So we can't wait to get on that. All right, we're coming into the garden here. I wanted to show you this fence setup. This is a Patriot Energizer, and we decided to go with this versus um, like a Premier One setup or a poultry netting setup, and this has actually worked great. If you can tell, this is wide open pasture land, and the other part of our property is on the other side of the creek. Um, this has been cow pasture and open to wildlife for a very, very long time. We have turkeys and deer, rabbits, everything you can think of. But this is the Patriot setup. We actually use the tape. We've doubled it on the bottom. And then we've put it up a little bit higher for larger animals. But this whole system um, has only cost us about $150. So I really recommend this. And then we just put a gate right here to come into. So I'm going to show you what it looks like. We have rows and rows and rows of different things going on and I need to get in here and weed, but we'll start on this end. This end we have four rows of potatoes. Um, these are the potatoes. I'll show a quick link uh, or a quick video clip. They actually got really damaged from the frost that we had in May. Um, and they are looking really fabulous. So these will probably get um, harvested probably end of June or early July. Next we have a bunch of onions. I didn't do anything special to these. I just threw them in the ground. I didn't even space them out very well. But here's one row. And then next to that is a row of carrots. And I just finished weeding through these the other day. I do love carrots. You do have to weed them meticulously. Um, this was not the ideal carrot setup for me. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest these when they're ready, but um, I think that I'm gonna plant them again closer to fall. Carrots really need a bed like this, and they also do well with mulch. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and completely restructure this bed once this group of carrots is out. 
put mulch down first and then pull the mulch back just a little bit, sprinkle my seeds in and put mulch back over top of it. That has always been the way that I've successfully been able to grow carrots and I'm really, I'm really sorry I didn't get that chance before I put these in the ground this year, but we were just kind of trying to throw in the ground what we could get in the ground. And so that's life. You do what you got to do, but we're going to do better next time. Here are some onions, just some spare ones here. And they actually go along with those onions way over there. <laughs> these were the onions from um, Dixondale Farms, I think it is. We just planted these and they're already starting to come up and they're looking really good. Um, they are not the same as those onions. Those are just yellow onions. These are, um, I don't remember what they are, but they're a really good slicer and they also store well. Coming up from there, we have some cabbage. I'm a little behind the game on cabbage, but they are in the ground and they are looking really good. These, I don't even know what they are. It just says cabbage and this was just a, um, a low special, so it looks good. Here I have a very pitiful row of beets. I might as well just pull them up and plant something else here. But again, this is one of those situations where I could have done better, but I was just trying to get stuff in the ground. All right, so here is the next row of onions uh, beside the row of beets. And I think all together we probably have like maybe 150 onions between that row over there carrots, more onions, beets, and then these onions. Junior actually planted these. Um, they're doing well. Ah, sorry. We had neighbors, new neighbors, <laughs> come by, which are conveniently also my, was my husband's cousin. So, all right, let's get back to this. Down from the onions, we also have uh, a couple of pepper plants. These are just stuck here because we have our big row of pepper plants here and they are all different kinds and I'll go through some of them with you real quick. So here's the infamous jalapeno. That's what these are right here. We have California Wonder. This is a bell pepper and I think that's what all of these are right here going up. There is a, a Golden California Wonder somewhere. If I had to guess, it's probably this one, but I'm not sure. It's probably these right here. And this is an intruder pepper. I have a few of these. These are like a, a large pepper, um, kind of like a poblano. Um, I have these, and then I have pepper crest yellow, which I believe is similar. We have some of those. We have a volunteer onion here. <clears throat> I'm not sure how he got there. And let's see what else is up here. Hot banana peppers and sweet banana peppers in this one row. So here's one row of two. We stacked them two and then there's just a small, small little walkway. I don't know if we'll actually use it or not. And then we're coming over to this section. We have uh, Carmen, which is also uh, a large pepper. A lot of people use these for cooking, uh, for salsas that are not hot, for um, tomato sauce, like pasta sauce, and for baking stuffed peppers. All right, coming down further in the pepper section, we have more sweet banana peppers. Look at these little peppers. They're getting, I don't know if you can see or not. They're getting little peppers on them. Um, the nice thing about it is some of these peppers are a lot smaller than these other big ones and that means that these will <clears throat> they're kind of recession planted naturally because we had them later oh no we have a pepper casualty I'm not sure what happened to that one it's kind of weird because all of our other peppers are doing really good um, more sweet banana peppers hot banana pepper uh, and Escamillo peppers and not sure where the California Wonder was. Some of these got mixed up, but here, here is our large, all of this up are peppers. 
So all together we have 50 pepper plants. Beside my pepper plants is my eggplant and it's non-existent because, <laughs> let me show you a picture. These are apparently flea beetles um, and they completely decimated my eggplant plants. I didn't know what they were. Um, there is a little bit of new growth, but I think I'm just gonna come in and pull these out. I mean, they didn't complete. Oh look, see there's one. Look at them, they're still on here. Oh, they're everywhere. So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna pull these out. We've never grown eggplant before. <clears throat> this was the Black Beauty eggplant. It's not extra Black Beauty, this was just extra plants they had. Um, and so I'm gonna pull these out. I, uh, somebody had shared with me, they do some, focus. They do some organic gardening and if you put a water bottle in here with like Vaseline on the outside, it attracts the flea beetles to those, um, the water bottles. So I'm gonna give that a try. I will come back later this week to replant them and put the water bottles in. All right, so now we get to the pride and joy, the tomato plants. All together, we have over 75 tomato plants um, and I have a few more that I wanna plant, but I'm gonna go show you what we have. So a lot of people grow tomato plants differently. We grow them on these T-posts with fencing. Um, could probably actually use an extra T-post there, but it's whatever. Um, we just pull the fencing. We don't start the fencing until right here. And then you can see this, they'll naturally start climbing. Um, this one unfortunately isn't tall enough to get up there yet. I'll have to come back and stake him up. Um, but this has worked really well for us in the past. Now here's the issue. I don't know what a lot of these tomato plants are because a lot of them I started from seed um, and the these, the marker came off. So this one is garden peach. Most of the tomato plants in this first one, uh, on this first side, are cherry tomato plants. And oftentimes you'll see the cherry tomato plants get um, flowers first. So that's what that one is. This is a citrine. They are orange cherry tomatoes. And so, so far our cherry tomatoes are doing really good. So our cherry tomatoes are in this first one. Our tomatoes go all the way from here, all the way down, and I'll show you in a wider range soon. So we have plants there, a nice large walkway, tomato plants. Here are some little flowers. Uh, when I first planted these, I did pinch the flowers off. You can also come in here and pinch these bottom leaves off because these aren't gonna grow fruit. Um, I'm not gonna pinch these off because these have already been in the ground for two weeks and they've already established a pretty good root system. Here are some more cherry tomatoes that found their way over here, Nature Bites. Nature Bites, that's what some of these are. So these are our bigger tomatoes and you'll see we have little ones. And then we have some bigger ones over there. And so these are just natural succession planting. Um, we bought them or grew them ourselves. Some will mature sooner than others, obviously. Um, but I like doing it this way so they don't all come in at one time. So the rest of our big tomato plants are either Amish paste, San Marzano. Um, we have some Cherokee purple that I hope I planted. I ended up selling some tomato plants because we had over 100 of them and I couldn't fit that many in here, but I'm probably gonna end up with about 80. Um, and then we have some slicers. Uh, we also have some hybrids that we're testing out this year, um, like, a, I think it's uh, called Carmelo, is what it's called. I'm not sure if I can find it in here, um, to see how we like those. All right, so the rest of our tomato plants. This one still needs the fencing, but you can see them all over there. All the little tomato plants. This garlic isn't supposed to be uncovered. I'm not sure why it's out like that, but I'm gonna try to cover it up a little bit. So this garlic is really fun. Um, the garlic that you see coming up already, uh, a person in the Homesteaders of America group actually sent me this garlic and 
It's from various different homesteads all across the country or, or in her area. Um, and a lot of it is, is German, from German homesteads. And you can tell this actually came up first. The garlic I bought, it's a spring garlic called Walla Walla garlic. That actually hasn't come up yet. And these were all planted at the same time. So it's kind of interesting to see that. We are missing a cattle panel. We'll have another one here and we'll straighten that out. But this is our cattle panels and these are for green beans. They actually haven't started coming up yet, I don't think. But these will come up in trellis the entire trellis. The rest of the spot is for sweet potatoes. And my poor plants do not look good. And I'm about to water them, but hopefully we'll get those in the ground this week. home because we still have some stuff to here to plant we have echinacea that's growing in the front and we have a lot of herbs left to plant say hi look more than anything though our garden is mostly in we do have some things left that we have to do um we still have sweet potatoes to plant i gotta get all my herbs in pots um i have a few more tomato plants left and i have some eggplant, the eggplant to replace. Mostly herbs though, and the sweet potatoes. Um, we wanna try to get those other plots done soon. I'm not quite sure when that'll happen or if it'll happen, but we'll show you if it does. And it's a modest garden. It's a way bigger than we've had in years past, but it'll be enough for us to do some canning this year and have some for to preserve, which we're really looking forward to. And as we expand, we still have pumpkins to plant and corn, and we also have a lot of squash to plant. So in Virginia, you don't start planting that stuff until now, and so we'll get that in the ground in the next couple of weeks. All right, I'm sorry to cut this video short, but I've got a baby that is ready to eat dinner and a family that's ready to eat dinner, and our day just 
simply did not go as planned. We have a, a lot of things to do today that we weren't expecting to do. And um, I hope that you enjoyed this garden tour. We can't wait to be on our new homestead and we have a lot to show you. But I'm glad that you joined me today for what few things we were able to get planted in the last few weeks that we could share with you and show you. And I hope you find some inspiration that you can garden just about anywhere. It has been hard to pull up that pasture grass, but it's been worth it. All right, guys, have a great day and happy homesteading.